All right, folks, uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome aboard our solo Amazon brief. Uh, hope everybody had a great weekend. I had an awesome weekend. My uh, daughter, Keely Grace, got confirmed in the Catholic Church, so that was a very uh, special afternoon. Went to the Panthers game. Panthers beat up on the Wild, and then the Eagles beat up on the Giants, man. Just what a, what a great weekend. Uh, and, the, of course, the Cowboys lost. So, obviously, if I'm an Eagles fan, uh, the Cowboys losing is just absolutely fantastic. Uh, so, hopefully, everybody in here had a great weekend. We're done with full throttle. Uh, took a little bit of a, a different tack last week. I literally just opened up the doors and let folks in instead of uh, uh, doing a bunch of sales stuff. So, still got our 50, so we're we're kind of done. And uh, so I figured I'd open up the doors for folks who couldn't get into full throttle or just weren't ready to take the leap yet or uh, want a gateway drug to check out what we do here. Top Gun Options, that's obviously our solo Amazon service. Great time to be in solo Amazon because Amazon earnings are coming up. And uh, it feels like the tech wreck is, is skidding along the bottom, right? I mean, from Tesla to Facebook, Amazon technically isn't a isn't a tech. I mean, they they call it a uh, consumer services, but it's obviously a massive uh, tech company. Uh, you know, I laugh at some of the tech companies. I laugh at Tesla. I laugh at Facebook. Google is starting to really panic, uh, especially with the chat stuff coming out. That chat GPT or whatever it is is a little creepy. It, it, you know. God willing, you know, I'm 54 now, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 years left. Who knows? In our lifetime, man, there's going to be some, the rest of my lifetime, there's going to be some creepy shit uh, with AI and these deep fakes. I mean, I've seen like Tom Cruise and Morgan Freeman videos where it's just, it's, it's creepy. Uh, people can take stuff and it's bad enough for me. I don't know if you, you all follow me on Instagram or whatever, but I get two, three messages a week from I'm in the wrong business from ladies like living in foreign countries, some in America who are getting scammed by people using my pictures and creating fake profiles. Literally every one of my pictures uh, and, you know, dudes in Nigeria or whatever it is, literally scamming people. It's just, it's so gross. <clears throat> a couple of ladies are pissed at me. I'm like, uh, you're an idiot. <laughs> you send somebody money that you met online the one lady sent me all this stuff. She's like, you told me you were stuck in Iraq and you needed money to get home. I'm like, what? W what? It's, it's sad. Anyway, let's go ahead and get airborne. Uh, solo Amazon. This is cool. I love this service. Uh, it's outside of full throttle. It's every Monday, obviously, at 10 a.m. And uh, we only trade Amazon. And why? Because I'm going to tell you why. And it makes this... This should simplify your life. If you're kind of new to trading or you're kind of retail-ish and just figuring out what to do, stop doing everything and only trade the stock that we call the Death Star. Uh, literally, Amazon is taking over everything, everything it touches. Uh, Amazon, uh, Amazon Web Services didn't even exist, right? Uh, Andy Jassy and Jeff Bezos made it in a condo. Now it's Microsoft, essentially. Amazon Entertain Prime Entertainment. I told you years ago, seven, eight, nine years ago, whenever it was in a live trade brief, I'm like a buddy of mine called me from FedEx corporate and said, who's Bezos owns Amazon, right? I'm like, yeah, why? He's like, I heard from a buddy of mine at GE Aircraft Leasing that they just leased five airplanes. I'm like, he's going to do it. He's like, what? I'm like, put you out of business and be bigger than you. <laughs> no, he won't. Yeah, he is. So uh, Amazon's just absolutely incredible. Uh, always start my solo Amazon brief with a question. Which fighter aircraft would you fly? Uh, I don't know if Goose is in here. Goose is one of our old guys. He actually flew the Phantom. This is an F-4 Phantom cockpit. Over 300 switches and dials in that cockpit. It's absolutely insane. Looking at that cockpit gives me agita. Uh, this com th th this was so kind of tough to fly. They threw another dude in the airplane in the back seat to run the radar. I mean, just a, a very labor intensive uh, aircraft where the pilot would spend a lot of heads down time uh, looking at all this crap instead of eyeballs out of the cockpit. Right. 
looking at enemy aircraft, surface air missiles, triple A, any aircraft artillery. Now check out this airplane. Two flat panel displays. Anybody see any uh, steam gauges in that cockpit? Nope. Two flat panel displays uh, in this aircraft. Of course, that's the F-35, the stealth fighter. It's the it's Wonder Woman. One of our or two of our TGO members fl flew the F-35. Uh, Shrek just retired. He's at FedEx. Speaking of FedEx, uh, he was an F-35 guy. He's like, dude, this airplane is just absolutely uh, insane. Um, it's uh, a cappuccino machine, exactly. Uh, so technologically advanced. Take a look. You know, uh, speaking of the Death Star, look at the helmet, man. I have uh, two of my old fleet helmets in here. Uh, I just took and walked out the squadron. These things are like a million bucks each, these helmets. Everything's projected on the visor and the display. They can target. They can do all, every, all the threats are up there. Man, it's just absolute insanity. So obviously, you'd rather fly the F-35. Why am I talking about this? Trading is a form of combat, folks. Somebody's going to win and somebody's going to get their ass kicked. In my world, you didn't go home. In trading, you're going to lose some money. So why wouldn't you use the same methodologies and procedures that we used to trade? So I'm going to give you an up-to-date intelligence brief. Obviously, we start every brief uh, with a strategic operational, and then we talk trading, SOT, strategic operational tactical, because literally since the last time I saw you on Thursday between today, literally this morning, things changed in Ukraine, and we're on the brink of nuclear war. Just fantastic. Uh, show you the only stock you need to own and also a good substitute uh, to trade, something else that we trade here at Top Gun Options in the uh, solo Amazon service. Uh, you guys know me. <clears throat> do, 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 do. I'm going to just blow through all my hit all my bio slides so we can get airborne right away. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this isn't going to shock you because if you watch Fox or CNBC or read the Wall Street Journal, you know this every day. Right. Wall Street's lying to you. If they can take money out of your pocket and transfer it into, into theirs, it, it, they're going to do it. They don't care about you. Nobody cares more about your money than you. I, I hopefully beat that in your head. I don't care. My registered investment. You're an idiot if somebody else cares more about your money than you. Even like the filthiest, richest dude or lady in the world, if, if somebody else cares more about their money than them, <clears throat> they're, they're getting somebody stealing from them. How many of you, day one of investing, I don't know how long you've been investing, I guarantee you on day one, you were taught what? Do not, do not, <clears throat> excuse me, put your eggs in one basket. Especially today, with let's go Brandon and supply chain issues and baby milk and egg shortages and gas and, you know, unbelievable bad in this country. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Who? And, and of course, uh, you, you were told what? You have got to diversify. Diversification is important and blah, blah, blah. You five steps. And until you're until they're blue in the face, the people on Wall Street tell you you have to diversify. Who's been telling you that? That dude. Right? Everybody, everybody has been, uh, training has reached the maximum number of attendees, 202. Oh, yeah. There you go. Um, the, uh, oh, it's okay, half a million bucks. It was a half a million bucks when it rolled out. So I uh, don't show again. I keep getting, see, this is why you show up on time, folks. <laughs> it's 10.09 and I keep getting this pop-up that says the training is full. This is why you need to get here early. Um, okay, uh, so this guy, right? He's a, a brokers, ladies and gentlemen. They want you in as many names as physically possible. Why? They want you to trade. They want you to get in and out, in and out, get out of this name, get into that name. Why? Commissions. You've seen The Wolf of Wall Street <clears throat> or Boiler Room or even the movie Wall Street, right? Bud Fox picking up the phone. Let's call the old ladies. Get them out of this stock. They were in it yesterday. Well, it's bad today. Get them out of it. Well, Wiz, you're wrong. I'm not. Why am I wrong? I trade with Robin Hood and I don't pay commissions. <laughs> if you don't pay commissions, 
you're not the customer. You're the product. It's called payment for order flow. You think that Robinhood, because of the name that they you know, take from the rich and give to the poor, they're protecting the rich. Stevie Cohen, Ken Griffin at Citadel, that's they're watching all of your order flow. Are they front running in front of it? Oh, geez, I don't know. That would be a crime. That, that could never happen. If you're at Robin Hood, you're getting cheated. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, this guy, they have said to get into everything. And you know what? Uh, let, let me talk like Wiz and then I'll clean it up. Here's what Wiz says. Diversification is for stupid people. Well, that's all well, that doesn't sound too nice. Well, it's the truth. So I'll be nicer. Diversification is a protection against ignorance. It makes very little sense for those who know what they're doing. Thank you, Warren Buffett. And he's right. You don't have to be diversified at all if you know what you're doing. And if you don't know what you're doing, why are you trading? Why are you investing? I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just going to invest in a bunch of different names. It's kind of dumb, but that's what they told me to do. <laughs> okay, good luck. Amazon, that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a hockey stick. If you had told me when I was first started investing that there would be a company that's uh, annual revenue growth is uh, you know over 30% a year on average, I'd be like, I'd sell the wife and kids mortgage to the house and buy that name with both hands. And I'd be a billionaire right now. You know, uh, look at the the revenue by segment. So I have to update these charts, but I, I mean, obviously, all of this is growing straight up. I mean, AWS was was in a condo in 2013, and it's probably up here. It's literally like my, Microsoft, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, and this is liberals and Democrats hate this slide. They hate this about Amazon. Now, if you hid the name here and told me, would you buy this stock? I'd look at this chart and go, I'd short it. And I'd be an idiot. Why? Sales through the roof. Free cash flow. Okay. I, I, I'd like to see more than that, but that's kind of profit. Are you insane? Short it. Folks, why does Amazon make little profit? How does it do that? Oh, maybe because day one, Jeff Bezos said, if I make a dollar, that dollar goes right back into Amazon, putting a competitor out of business, buying a new airplane, buying a new product, uh, paying for attorneys to sue other people or the SEC folks. And he's he's laughed. He's like a dividend. What are you people insane? Why would I be, quote, giving money back to the shareholders? If we make a profit, it goes right back into the company. So this is why Democrats and liberals hate Amazon. We're gonna we're gonna tax the shit out of Amazon. We didn't make a profit this uh, this year. Oh, oh, oh. No, that's called capitalism. All the money that I made, I put it back into the company and grew the company, and hired more people, gave more people four hundred one k's and healthcare. And you're gonna penalize me for that? But anyway, isn't it funny? And isn't it funny how people in DC are like, well, we have to come up with a special law to tax them. Then what? I love asking Democrats and liberals. You ever get a job from a poor person? Oh, no. Okay. So, uh, JG, with a small account trading Wiz's Amazon trades, netted 8900 bucks in one week. Kristen, you guys are amazing. I trade a smaller account and have done 22 Amazon trades for about thirty one grand. Christine, month-to-day profits, six figures, 107, with more to go. Thanks, Wiz, for all your expertise and guidance doing my day trades with short calls to protect my Amazon profits, learning from the best. Anne, I was fall in the fall. Oh my God, she crushed it. In three days, I made 90 grand on short calls against my 30 contracts, utilizing Wiz's guidance. This makes my heart smile. Now, before I just, you know, sit here and Go Jim Cramer and just beat my chest and say, this is great. It's the smartest thing in the world as a fighter pilot, as an options trader. What do I do? I look at potential risks. Awesome, man. Who was that? Salim. Dude, that rocks. Congrats. Yeah, I was going to show you my portfolio month to date. And it looks like you and I are doing about the same. Risks of trading just one name. Anybody hear of a small mom and pop called Lehman Brothers that was around for 150 years? 
Bear Stearns, speaking of Jim Cramer, Jim Cramer knows about Bear Stearns, famously screaming on CNBC that you're an idiot, your money's safe at Bear Stearns, don't touch it. Two days later, it was at zero. Good call, Jim. Pets.com, Enron. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, what's the common thing? I could sit here for the rest of our time together and, and show you how many names uh, have gone to zero. The point being, ladies and gentlemen, is this. They didn't own anything. It's air. Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns owned air. Most financial firms own air. Contracts, counterparty risk. Pets.com was a stinky sock and a, and a domain name. Enron didn't even own the building they were in, man. They were a middleman of electricity. Watch the smartest guys in the room, the Enron uh, thing. How about this clown? Uh, you know, Sam, Sam Bankman fraud, right? Built on air, lies, bullshit. The mooch, Scaramucci, $65 million investment, gone. Mr. Wonderful, I hate crypto. Here's 15 million bucks. I love crypto. FTX is awesome. Great risk management procedures. Wall Street is lying to us, Wiz. Oh my God, yeah. Who called crypto a Ponzi scheme and a fraud on day one? Me. Amazon owns things, folks. You ever drive by an Amazon fulfillment center? They look like an aircraft carrier. They're massive. They got people with different color shirts. They got robots going around the floor. It owns things. It has assets. It owns its own fleet of airplanes, ladies and gentlemen. Amazon is now shipping cargo for outside customers, competing with FedEx and UPS. They're actually passing. They passed. Who said that nine years ago? Wiz. Nailed it. Told my buddies at FedEx, I'm like, they're going to be bigger than you. <laughs> That's impossible. Wrong. Holy shit, what's this guy doing here? Yeah, blast from the past. Why is he on my screen? Political risk. Does everybody remember when Donald Trump woke up one morning or didn't go to bed, depending on who you believe? Uh, grabbed his cell phone. Amazon, uh, massive monopoly. Somebody should do something about it. Uh, Jeff Bezos, uh, you know, limousine liberal, Washington Post, awful. Look into Amazon. What happened? The stock went down a little bit and then looked around and went, <laughs> okay, dude, to the moon. Last year of his presidency-ish, again, the cell phone, again, the it's a monopoly. Somebody needs to break it up. What happened? Nothing. What happened since then? All sorts of negative news doj this ftc that antitrust this antitrust that um F D it, ladies and gentlemen it doesn't matter the last time i checked jeff bezos elon musk kind of a race richest poorest billionaire on the planet probably has a couple attorneys i'm old enough to remember standard oil i'm old enough to remember microsoft ibm uh at&t the bells what happened it takes anywhere from five, 10 years when Uncle Sam goes, we're going to look in if you're a monopoly before they even like get to a decision. And right now, folks, it's too late. Amazon is mercury. You smash mercury, you got a lot more mercury. Amazon is a massive death star. If you break it up, now you got Amazon Air competing with, it would compete like 20 individual monopolies instead of one big one. So- I got to brief you on the risks from political and, and all that type of stuff, right? So anyway, uh, yeah, and now they're laying off employees and stuff like that. So anyway, folks, I'm going to tell you how he feels an American as whiz. I can't stand Jeff Bezos. He's the definition of a limousine liberal. His tweet when Joe Biden won, like, standing by, Mr. President, to help you roll out vaccines and shit. Well, we can use our massive distribution network. I'm like, you awful human being. And remember during the primary when Trump was running for president, he's like, I'd like to put that guy on the moon on one of my rockets. He's just that limousine liberal. He's bowed to the woke mob. And what's the woke mob done? Turned on him and going more after Amazon. So enjoy your stupidity. Now, being bipolar, I'll turn into Gordon Gecko. I don't give a shit about any of that. I love Amazon. I want them to fire more people to fire, 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 and the people that they keep to pay them even less. Why? It goes to the bottom line. I want Amazon to make money. It's not a charity. So I'll give you a little bit of both of me. <laughs> Sometimes I call it a hold your nose trade, man, right?
Sometimes we just got to go. Now, what are the benefits of just being in Amazon? You're just in one name. And we can make money. I'll teach you as an options trader. If it's going up, down, or sideways, we can potentially make money. You're just focused on that name. I had a guy at the Panthers game who was a, a DPM, a, a designated primary market maker uh, in Microsoft up in the SIBO at the, uh, the time I was there. I, I didn't know him, but it was just funny talking to him. He's like, yeah, we were laughing because I told him about my Apple buddy. He, and he's like, dude, I didn't know another stock market. I didn't know the stock market existed. I eat, breathe, sleep Microsoft. I knew that name like the back of my hand. So you're going to become an expert and it's going to reduce all the time you spend looking at this ETF and that name and this stock. Folks, at the at the firm I worked at in Chicago, we had a research desk, 20, 22, 25, I forget, big area of our trading floor where each analyst had to know like three names, horrifically know those names. They got shit wrong often. I'd go over to them and be like, hey, man, see that earnings? What do you do? You have like three jobs and one of the names you're supposed to know, like the back of your hand, you got completely wrong. So if you're sitting here with 19 names in your portfolio, do, do, do you know what you're doing? I, I hope you do. I always tell the story. It's a true story. He's a TGO member now. Doc, uh, a, a, a good buddy of mine, showed me his portfolio. Wiz, I need help. He, he showed me his brokerage platform and he had. 33 positions. I'm not shitting you. This is a, it, he, he, I need to bring him on one of these as a guest so he can, or give a testimonial. Make, I'll go film a video at his doctor's office. He's that guy. He tried to explain shit to me. I think this is a pot stock. I'm like, you think? I, that's a surgical thing. A buddy got me into, it's down 50%. I'm waiting for it to come back. Then I'll dump it. I'm like, doc, you get math, right? For it to come back to where it is right now, do you? What's the? Per, I'm like, stop talking, shut up, get out of everything, type of thing, and trade one name. Does that make sense to everybody? Uh, and and if you're sitting here going, you know what? I, I I think he's talking to me. Looking at my brokerage account right now, I have a ton of stuff. Um, yeah, man, just a handful of names. If you're sitting here going, does not compute, I, I, I hear you is, but must diversify, guess what else we trade in this portfolio? XLY. Just like shrimp are a vehicle for eating cocktail sauce, the XLY is a vehicle for eating Amazon. About a quarter of, uh, of this ETF is Amazon. Check out what else. Is, who's the silver medalist? Tesla. You want a, uh, you want a shrimp? With some cocktail sauce, eat XLY. Amazon, Tesla, Home Depot, McDonald's, Nike. Nike uh, moving out of Seattle. Funny. Uh, isn't that their headquarters and everything like that? It's a shit show, literally. Lowe's, Target, Booking. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're a does not compute, must diversify, we are going to trade some XLY to get you some diversification. So this is awesome. We target... Amazon or XLY with a base position. We're going to fly out into the future when you become a member about two to two and a half years out into the future, and we can get bullish with a tactic called synthetic stock or a long call diagonal. And check out the parentheses, protective puts. I never went flying in that Hornet. I don't go flying in the jets that I personally own without an ejection seat, right? You always want to have some protection on, man. I never told the chief, pull the ejection seat out, chief. I want 800 pounds more of gas. <laughs> That's the day I would have gotten shot down or died or crashed or done something stupid. So just like a Marine landing on Iwo Jima, we will establish a base position out into the future. Then what do we do? We trade the front months. What's the front month? You're sitting in it. January, February, March, kind of the front months, right? Amazon or XLY is going up. We'll play bullish spreads or buy some calls. Uh-oh, it's imploding. Who cares? Uh-oh, we make money. Bear spreads or buy some puts. If it's sideways, like it had been for three weeks, we can do iron condors. It's a range-bound trade. I think we did one, was it? No, last week we thought about legging into an iron condor, didn't we? And we didn't because it imploded. We made max profit on the Amazon spread from last week. Okay? All right, enough of that shit. Look at that. That was perfect, man. 
That is right at the time that I wanted it to be at. So here, men lie, trades don't. Here is the Amazon trade we'll debrief from last week. We did in solo Amazon, uh, or no, it was in the, the joint brief, wasn't it? Because, um, yeah, it was Martin Luther King last Monday because I was up in Chicago. Okay. Uh, the 98-99 bear call spread. It made... It, if you got the trade the way I get it, uh, did it, it is you risked five grand to potentially make twenty four hundred bucks, right? That's four years of an annual membership in Solo Amazon with one trade. You're welcome. So we'll we'll, we'll talk about how you can how you can grab yours. I think by the time I got into it and got filled, I, I made twenty two hundred bucks. So 2200 bucks on that Amazon trade from last week. So Salim, you're actually doing better than I did, man. My month to date across the portfolios is uh, about 31 grand. So Salim's beating me at 40. I love losing to TGO members. Nothing makes me happier. It's, it's a quote from Seneca, right? The only man who I would ever want to see me outdo me in this world are my sons or something like that. I say that, but also my TGO members. That's awesome. All right, so solo Amazon, folks. Let's take a look at, first of all, Amazon earnings. I don't think they've been confirmed yet. I think they're estimated to be around February 2nd. Quote. Oh, they finally confirmed it. Quick teaching moment. Where do you actually confirm Amazon earnings? You just did on the E-Trade platform. Wrong. Where do you confirm Amazon earnings? The only place on the face of the planet. Because I have actually seen this wrong. You got it, Obi. The Amazon IR page, investor relations. Every public company, when you go to Amazon.com, there has to be an I investor relations page. It's where they make all their formal announcements, correct? Give me a vertical head nod. So you can go over there and look, but let's just for shits and grins say February 2nd. So Amazon tends to or should kind of, you know, this week there's a ton of people going into their quiet period. I mean, the Fed, there's a lot of stuff going on this week that we need to brief real quick. So the Fed is ba 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 ba. A lot going on this week. Some Fed stuff. GDP. Well, we'll get to it in a second. Let me just knock out a quick brief. Look at the top of the Drudge Report this morning. War. Germany will not block tanks. So let, what's Ken Griffin doing on the Drudge Report? Citadel books a record. Wow. $16 billion in profit. I know Ken Griffin. Not really well. I've met him a couple times. He was our competing firm in Chicago. He lives here in Boca. Flies his G5. Actually, he doesn't fly his G5 in and out of here anymore. I mean, I'm sure he does, but every weekend he used to be flying from Chicago to the Boca airport right up the street from me. And then after his COO or whoever got mugged last year, he's like, done, leaving Chicago. And they bought a massive building down in Miami in Brickell to the moon. But ladies and gentlemen, um, over the weekend, lots of things happen. Vladimir Putin is amassing 700,000 troops for a, an attack out of Belarus, an attack, at, you know, in the East, kind of a pincer move. Um, Medvev warned last week. Again, he's like, I, I don't know if y'all are like kind of really listening to us. We're not kidding. And of course, the West does not believe them. So over the weekend, um, Germany caved. Germany said Poland can send the Leopard 2 tanks. Last week, Germany said what? You know, why don't you go first, Joe? Why don't you send some of your N1 Abrams battle tanks, your main battle tanks, and then we'll send the Leopards? Biden said no. So over the weekend, they said, okay, 
Leopard 2 can go to Germany. Wow. So again, folks, I, I, I cannot believe I'm sitting in a live trade brief in 2023 talking about Germany, Poland, tanks, war, Russia. This is an excellent read. This puts everything I've been talking about in one place. We're essentially, we could, the, the world literally could end, ladies. This isn't hyperbole. I can't stand people in, in the media or, I, I'd love to know where our quote military leaders are. Well, Millie, to his credit, last week said what? This war ain't over next year. It will be a grind in 2023. It's not over anytime soon. Did you see the media freak out? How dare you say that? And, and you know, this we get him everything. It'll be over really soon. No, no, it's not. Unless that mushroom cloud goes up over Ukraine, it's going to be a grind. We've talked repeatedly about, well, Putin needs to eat a bullet or die of cancer. Okay. Do, do, do you think some hippie beatnik, peacenik is taking over for him? It sounds like the dude in charge of the, 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 the Wagner group, their mercenary arm, might actually take Putin out and actually use nukes. So all you out there going, Putin has to go. Okay. He's not being replaced with a Girl Scout, folks. You have got to read this article. So essentially, folks, so, so does everyone else in the world get a vote on whether their lives should be risked in an offensive to control who governs Crimea? Or will the Biden administration just be making that call on behalf of all living creatures? The U.S. empire is telling Moscow, I'm the craziest mf -er around. I'll keep ramping up the brinksmanship, looking you right in the eye and daring you to use nukes. While telling the rest of the world, I'm the voice of sanity that you should look to for leadership. This is a really, really good article. Literally, the only reason mainstream Westerners are fine with the U.S. empire's nuclear brinkmanship with Russia is because they don't understand it. And those who do understand it don't think very hard about it. They avoid contemplating what nuclear war is and what it should mean. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm begging you to read this because it talks about, well, I told you this stuff, we believe in mad, mutually assured destruction. Right, that the argument for nukes is that the threat of nukes deters them. They will never, nobody will ever use nukes because it's insane. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the I, I've told you this repeatedly. You need to know this. They don't believe that, and that's not a bluff. Their nuclear posture is: we believe we can win a nuclear exchange. No, oh, those people are stupid. Keep believing your enemy is stupid. Keep believing your enemy isn't going to do what they're threatening you they're going to do. Keep doing all of that stuff. And in the history of warfare, tell me how that works out for those people. If you've got two people pointing pistols at each other, an exchange of gunfire might be avoided for fear of retaliation. But if one gunman breaks the standoff by walking towards the other, holding a knife in his other hand, odds are the other guy pulls the trigger. So, folks, you know, I, I, I'm telling you, man, there's some, this is bad. And then, you know, as the market's melting up here, just doing its standard for lack of bad news, we're just going to kind of melt up. We got a VIX below 20 again. Unbelievable. Now, obviously, we had a big expiration last week, and but, folks, this is... Let's let's here's your two year chart, man. We are down down in the doldrums and it's a heart rate monitor. Something is going to happen. And I, I just I, I don't right now with the VIX being down here and, and the market kind of melting up. It's a hold your nose rally for me. I, I we might be eating some popcorn here in a little bit. Um, big earnings this week. Microsoft, Verizon. Tesla, AT&T, Boeing, um, American, Blackstone, MasterCard, Visa, Amex. So, so far, earnings don't look great. Hmm. What did I tell you about a February shit? Oh, God, no, Barry. Why would you? 
I, I, Barry, I can't tell you what to do. Let me ask you. Do you want to exit the VIX February trade? Me? Insane. God, no. If anything, I'd add to it. I, I wouldn't. I, 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 when I put that trade on, I gave you my commit criteria, right? Not only has none of that commit cri criteria changed, it's gotten stronger. I actually thought that, you know, Germany wouldn't blink. You, you guys send tanks first. No. All right, well, then we're going to send them. Russia's defense minister said what last week? We're going to start tanking the, uh, we can start attacking countries that are supplying these type of weapons. We are now at war with them. Folks, I, I, so Barry, long, long answer to your short question, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I, my commit criteria is solidified. So we're, we're kind of in the, uh, you know, 11% uh, reported last week. So we're we're now we're in the the heat of earnings season, man. It's going to uh, it's going to pick up uh, this week. Uh, market recovery hinges on quick inflation drop. I love this word. I love reading it whenever we're in a, a live trade brief. Hope hopes that price increases will cool rapidly have supported stocks and bonds this year. Hopes. Wow. What did we talk about last week? Inflation is what? What did the, who was it? The Unilever CEO. How about the disgusting Davos conference? Limousine liberals, elites flying in their private jets to a Tony resort town, sleeping with escorts, lecturing us about gas stoves and climate change. It's physically gross. And the fact that these people can't step outside of themselves and look at themselves and go, eh, is awful. The cognitive dissonance with these people, they live in these echo chambers. You're awesome. No, you're awesome. We're all awesome. All those people are shit. The unwashed masses, they need to listen to us because we just all agreed we're awesome. Any homeless people there speaking or any, yeah, it's just any veterans. You all talking about the war in Ukraine? I told you that uh, No Fallen Heroes might be going international. One of, one of our guys who does a lot of work with Ukraine is like, dude, those guys are, there's a lot of hurting. They're still in it, obviously. They're still in the middle of the war, but these guys are, um, the veterans of Ukraine, the veterans of Russia. Any veterans of war are going to need are going to need some serious help. Anyway, um, here's what I'm getting at. Back off Davos, just because it's just it's so. Each year, I think that maybe this will be the year they wake up about just how awful they are, and they don't. It just Brian Stetler fired from C CNN, who's now a a Harvard fellow or something, a Harvard teacher, was like running a panel on disinformation in the media. You can't, you can't. This is how they, they keep going, right? It's so insane that they go insaner. Instead of like, we can't have that guy host that type of panel. They do it just to reinforce the, the awfulness of it. So anyway, uh, I, I bring up the Unilever CEO because last week he said what? In, inflation's sticky. I got my prices up here. Hey, inflation came in a little bit. Uh, who cares? We're staying up here. Think about it, folks. Restaurants you go out to, the a bottle of wine, the stuff that I see, I'm like, my God, man, is this stuff ever going to come down? If it doesn't, we're in a lot of trouble, man. I think the average person, whatever it was, like based on inflation and everything last year, the calendar year was like a loss of $25,000 to the average household because of the in price in eggs and gas and baby milk and so uh, I'm ranting about this because that headline, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I just don't, I don't believe that's going to happen. I'm sticking with my, my four 2023 predictions. Shit show, train wreck, bigger bear market, bigger recession. So th there's a lot to read in there. I'm not going to read it, but uh, the bottom line of this article is like, that's why they use the word hope because <laughs> it ain't going to happen. Spotify. 
I love these. I love CEOs like this. I take full responsibility. It's this is really hard email for me to write, and I take full responsibility because I'm firing all of you. Um, yay. That who who else is supposed to take responsibility? Your your executive assistant, the dude in the mailroom. I can't stand shit like this. I take full responsibility. Fucking duh. <laughs> oh, duh. How was your day, honey? Laid off a shitload of people, but I, I told him I took full responsibility. Gas up the jet. We're going to Park City. So every week, man, I'm briefing you on what? Microsoft, Amazon, has all these companies slashing jobs. Have you seen Jean-Claude Van Damme or Joe Biden out of the microphone lately? The jobs market's incredibly strong. Oh, no, no, it's not. So the Fed, I, it, we're in a market now where nothing matters. No fundamentals, volatility, nothing matters, technicals. It's, it's a bunch of white dudes and ladies and some minorities at the Fed. Couple, uh, it, it just, They control the market. Officials could begin weighing. Do you all remember for the past couple of years, some of these Fed meetings? Remember like at this time last year, the, the press conferences we'd watch together were comical. Ch Chairman Powell, is this the meeting where you kind of sort of thought of maybe even contemplating possibly bringing up raising interest rates? And they'd all wink at each other and laugh and chuckle. We're back to that. But the other direction. Chairman Powell, yes, Wiz from Top Gun Options. Is this the meeting where y'all talked about? And it's going. This is where we're at. He's going to say no, of course, or you know, where it's data dependent. I'll, I could write his speech before he gives it, folks, and you know, I could. I know what he's going to say. It's the market reaction to what he says that's going to be interesting because we're going to get to the point uh, where the market is going to hear. We're going to, their jobs are going to be sucking. Inflation is still going to be raging ish, war in Ukraine. But when this dude comes to one of those press conferences or we read the written word that kind of says, we actually are looking at maybe thinking, boom, market's going to rally. Rip your face off, rally. I don't think it's now. Obviously, I think we got a February shit show and stuff like that. But, this is why I say a June, mid-year, I, I, I'm saying a middle-of-the-year rally to fallish. Because that's when they will pause or pivot. And we've beaten this dead horse a little bit. Um, what's that? Oh, Tesla, I'll move on from that. We'll talk about Tesla tomorrow in the primary live trade brief. Because of this, last week we went bankrupt. We're in our overdraft. Janet Yellen just... Standing on a basketball, juggling flaming chainsaws to pay our bills, and the Republicans are going to do it. They are already contingency planning. They already told Joe, we're not going to do it. You're going to have some cuts to make. Nope. Pass a clean debt limit bill, or we're not doing anything. Oh, boy. We already laughed about how in our full throttle services, we're going to print money on the stupidity of this. It's kabuki theater, folks, and it's going to be fun. All right. We're going to get tacked in on a second here with some Amazon. Let's look at the flight schedule for the week. The uh, PMIs can be market moving. The, the services PMI. Remember that little red flag right there, or red flame? High impact expected, medium for the orange, and then eh, for, the, for the manila. Uh, the biggest, one of the bigger things of the week will be this one. Thursday morning. Ladies and gentlemen, let's debrief this. GDP, in case you don't know, comes out in three parts. Leave it to the government to get three bites at the apple, in case we got it wrong. GDP comes out in advanced, preliminary, and final, which is comical. So advanced is what? The advanced release is the earliest and tends to have the most impact oh boy so if the gdp shows some contraction that 
could be part of the recession thing, right? Ladies and gentlemen, two quarters of negative GDP growth traditionally is called a recession, okay? This thing, that pop is based on what? Scandemic spending. The Deficit Reduction Act, which does none of it, or the Inflation Reduction Act, whatever that was, whatever the lie name was, it's the Affordable Care Act. They name things the exact opposite of what they are. So this is why all the, everybody's like, no, we're not technically in a recession. Okay. So it was 3-2 last time. They're looking for a 2-6. So they're actually looking for GDP to come in a little bit. This will be interesting. David, you, you know as well as I do the answer to that question. It's absolutely yes. So Thursday is going to be a pretty big day, man, with a lot going on. With the GDP, durable goods, weekly claims, our trade balance, wholesale inventories, new home sales, some nat gas. Big day on Thursday. And then a, f uh, wow, this is a big, later, this is a big week. So huge week, folks, with S&P 500 earnings and a lot of stuff. PCE, personal income, personal spending, pending home sales, UM, UM inflation expectations. Oh, this one is big. Why? Because it asks people what? How you doing? Read the why traders care section. Expectations of future inflation can manifest into what? As we've talked about, real inflation. Primarily because workers tend to do what? Hey, man, I'm getting killed. I can't even buy eggs or fill my tank. You, boss, need to pay me more. Uh, we don't have the money. Well, I can go over to our competitor because the jobs market is still not fully imploding, but I can get a job somewhere else. I quit. All right, I'll pay you more. Big, big week of everything. So a couple things. Let's go right to the S&P 500. We are sitting here just around 4,000, folks. This is a critical point. Looking for, you know, 4,000. Look at all that stuff in there. Resistance, resistance, resistance support. Broke through it. And chop. Look at all the 4,000 chop here. We've gone through it. We've gone through it. But that's also kind of where the 200-day was. Why am I using a gray pen? I have no idea. Um, Let me draw this real quick before I do anything. This is a big week, which equals potentially this. Don't do anything. There are some we I don't force trades. I don't do any of that shit, man. We're going to go take a look at Amazon in a second. But man, on a week where there's going to be breaking news, this and earnings that and after the bell and before the bell and Fed this and PCE that. This is one of those weeks where I can draw this. We are going to get a rally or this. Very rarely recently have we had a that. Two weeks of chop, right? Iron Condor Central. That's where we're doing some good Amazon work and some good sniper shooting on the S&P. Now we're in a we move, which is great. I mean, I, I love movement, but it's definitely not a market's going up like that, man. Those days are over with for a while. The next time you're going to see markets doing that shit are when Jerome just says, eh, we're going to hang out for a little bit and hold our fire. Rip your face off rally. I don't care what's going on in the economy. Oh, my God, the jobs market's awful. There is a nuke that went off in Ukraine. The market will go down a little bit and then up. What? You heard me. When, not if, Jerome Powell pauses, it's a rip your face off rally. The stock market is not the economy. Take that to your grave. The economy can be shit, and the market's having to rip your face off, rally. Everybody give me a vertical head, head nod that you understand that. So having said that, that we might kind of sort of want to sit on our hands. Let's just go, let's poke around some Amazon. Um, we had a great bear call spread last week that paid for four years of an annual membership in the solo Amazon. You're welcome. I mean, look at that. So this was a two-week range. You could have been doing, and I'm glad, you know, a lot of you, if you were in full throttle last week, you went to the Wednesday night brief, and I said, what? 
yeah, we had this happen. I'm like, I'm not put on a bull put spread. Friday, it was a little bit of a pop, but it didn't matter. We, uh, we I exited my uh, bear call spread for 90% profit. Or that's what it was. Yeah, I didn't. There we go. I'm like, 2400 bucks. We got, I got out of the uh, bear call spread for uh, the, at 2175. And I'm glad I did because we did get a pop on um, Friday. So there you go. Don't turn, I told you this in a little bit of the training, do not turn a 70, 80, 90% winning trade uh, into a 100% loser, okay? But let's let's take a look at Amazon. It's, it's itching to break out of this range. It could get some airspeed going here, or to be honest with you, it could be, it could be, I didn't want those lines. Um, this is a this is a potentially very volatile week. So how volatile? Let's go. This is a little saucery, a little trickery here. Where would you look at maybe doing an iron condor? Well, you could look at the chart and say, let me put up a horizontal line. Where do we bottom out? 82-ish? 82 and a half. Yeah, right there. I'll just put 82. And the resistance of late has been right around 99. Okay. But obviously we're button up against the top of that, that range here. So there's some technical stuff. Now go look at what the options market is telling us, right? We are close to $97, right? We're at 97.13 on Amazon. There's not a 97.13 strike here, but 97 is close enough. You click on straddle, sell it, and make sure you have Friday, January 27th, right there. It's 368 wide. Let's go take a look at the Elizabeth Warren TP, or it's 368, right? So it's 368 to the top and 368 to the bottom, 6, 7, 20, however, whatever that math is. So ladies and gentlemen, with about a 60% probability, the options market is saying Amazon's going to stay between 100 and 93, right? So I... I put the line right around 99 or 193. Let's actually go put those on the chart here. So 100 and then it was 93. So that makes sense because obviously right there. Well, we have a one year up. That's a little stupid. There you go. That's a better looking picture. <laughs> so the options market is saying, hey, man, going to be a little tight in here. Um, this melt up, folks, look, look at the SPX. For today, I mean, or the past, you know, Friday, the, the Friday, uh, look at, the, so right now, folks, this is, this is momentum. Me looking at this market, there's nothing fundamental in here. The Fed's still going to be raising interest rates. It might be 25. Uh, okay, they're still cranking up interest rates. So now, this is one of those times. That's This is a tear. I was about to call it a good climb schedule. So when something's on a tear, either join it, yay, get bullish, or get out of the way. So if you're, if you're a get out of the way person right now, you go pop your popcorn and sit here the rest of the week and kind of kind of observe. Or if you're in solo Amazon, just take a look at a two-year chart of Amazon. Or no, let's do five-year. Where did we bounce off, ladies and gentlemen? I dropped this line in here a long time ago. There is what? I can't believe it was that long ago. That is your COVID bottom. Look at the COVID bottom. We got a good, healthy bounce off of that thing. Now, of course, that can happen. February shit show coming, in my opinion, nuclear war in Europe, blah, blah, blah. But if, you know, if, and I said this about Tesla too, if, if Amazon isn't 
at the bottom, it's pretty damn close. And most likely you're going to see, even if it's got lower to go, you're going to see here on the way up again. Okay. So if you are in a popcorn mood, but you're like, you know what? Even if we do have a February shit show is I don't mind because I'm going to jump in my F-35 and I'm going to fly all the way out to June of 2025 and we can get bullish, right? We can get bullish on Amazon all the way out to June of 2025 and we can do a position that is called synthetic stock. <clears throat> Let me go, what time is it? Oh man, we're gonna go, I'm gonna go a little past an hour long, but this, we need to. Um, synthetic stock, what the hell does it mean? You don't own the stock and you don't get a dividend, right? You don't physically own the stock. Amazon doesn't give dividends, Wiz. Or, and you don't get the vote, you're not a shareholder. Jeff Bezos votes, you don't. I'm a shareholder. Yeah, I'm sure your vote really counts. So, but synthetic stock is going to perform exactly as if you owned this stock, but you're not coming out a shit load of money. This is the power of options. This is the leverage we get. So I'm going to, I'm going to cruise a little bit because this is why you need to do the full throttle training that you can do with solo Amazon. It's just a little bit of a, of an upgrade. I think it's an extra 195 bucks to get access to an hour and a half of synthetic stock training. Then I'm going to give you in about four minutes. Here's how you do synthetic stock. You go all the way out into the future, Jan June of 2025, and you see the 97 strike. Is there a 97 strike? Nope. There's a 95 and 100. So the tie goes to the runner. I go deeper in the money. If I'm bullish on all Amazon all the way out into the future, what can I do? I'm going to buy 95 calls, right? I'm bullish. All the way out into the future, I'm buying at the money calls. If you're also bullish on Amazon, what can you do? You could sell a put. You could sell in at the money put. I'm going to analyze this trade real quick. That PL diagram is long stock. Amazon goes up a buck. It, you go up a buck. Synthetic stock, Amazon goes up a buck. Your position goes up a buck. Look at this, long stock, synthetic stock. Wow, isn't that awesome? Well, folks, whoa, max potential loss is 10 grand, man. That, that, that's a lot of money. What did I say in the PowerPoint slides? We need to add a protective put. So I'm gonna place a put underneath this. What And what's a disaster? I, I also call these disaster puts. What would be a disaster? 20%. Most of the time, if the S&P is down 20% or Amazon goes down 20%, what do we say? The stock is in a bear market. So what's 20% underneath, uh, what's that, 18? What's 20% of 97? Somebody do that real quick. 18, what's that, like 80 bucks? What's the 20% put? Somebody help me out with that because I suck at public math. I used to be very good at it. Let's just say it's the 80. Check this out. Instead of risking 10 grand, <clears throat> I magically made the max potential loss only 3,700 bucks. Wow. So right now we have synthetic stock with a protective put. Now for this portfolio, I probably maybe do three. Yeah, about three of these. Okay. Now, what can we also do? And there's, once you become a member here, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you how to become a solo Amazon member, you need to go watch the synthetic put training because there are a bunch of things we can do with this right now. We could add a front month. What's the front month? Right now, we're in it. We could sell, uh, the disaster put is 77-ish. There's a 75, I'll do the 75 put. We could sell a front month. What is Friday's expiration? January 27th. Why don't we sell a front month put? We could sell three of Friday's one, uh, not put, uh, call, sorry, duh. I was like, wait a minute, that looks really weird. I could sell three of Friday's 100 call to bring in money. 
three contracts. What's mid market? I don't know, 76 cents, seven times three, 210 bucks. You could bring in a little bit of scratch on a weekly upside call trade. On your screen right now is a synthetic covered call or a collar. There, there's so many names we could call this. That's why I don't like the names. I just kind of build the trade and, and you follow along with me. Let me grab a screenshot of this so I can put it on the replay page. I already have, uh, this is the primary portfolio. I pulled up the wrong one because I was looking at my performance month to date. Um, uh, Amazon. 123. Hey. Okay. If I had just landed from the planet Mars and joined Solo Amazon, this is the trade I would do today. Now, you, not me, you sign for your airplane. You sign for your portfolio. You are the pilot in command of your portfolio, not me. I'm a single seat fighter pilot. I can't go climb over near a cockpit and sit on your lap be rather uncomfortable. Um, if you believe there's a February shit show coming, don't do this. Don't wait. If you think Amazon is going to go lower, but you know, between now and June of 2025, I, I'm, you know, if Amazon gets hammered and goes back down to the upper eighties or, or down to 80, but by June of 2025 is up at 170, I'm not going to care. Plus in solo Amazon, I'm going to keep trading spreads and doing all sorts of stuff in this portfolio so we've established our beachhead and we'll start trading some front month options as well okay so that's a new synthetic stock position on amazon when you join solo amazon in seven minutes from now you can get access to the full throttle training where you can get a lecture that is an hour and a half hour on synthetic stock i did it in eight minutes that's not what I do, but this is why I do this. This is why we do full throttle training at night, right? It's markets closed, we're hanging out and we can talk through it. This is why in the briefs I can go, boom, synthetic stock and I'll map it out real quick. And I'll tell the new folks, go watch the training. Okay, everybody give me a vertical head nod that you understand all of that. Okay. All right, folks, uh, Solo Amazon, uh, one of our newest uh, live trading services. The briefs are usually individually. If you buy them full throttle, like sliced up, they're $167 a month. You can get Solo Amazon today for 97 bucks a month, or I'll give you a, a nice discount. You can do the annual. Let me give you the annual first, $897 a year. I'll give you both links, the 97 and the, uh, whatchamacallit, the uh, 8 97. So here's the monthly. Hold on. Top Gun Solo Monthly. 97 bucks a month, folks. Went to the Panthers game the other night. Man, uh, soft pretzels and hot dogs were a hell of a lot more than the 97 bucks a month that Solo Amazon gives you. You also get your manuals. Let me help you out uh, since I'm a political science major. It's 97 bucks a month. You're getting manuals that if you bought on my website today, you'd spend 197 bucks. For all the people like me who can't do math, I'll help you. That's 100 bucks in your pocket. Keep the manuals, man. Do a month for 97 bucks. Keep the manuals. You, you, you made money. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, let me give you the annual. You get a 20, 25, I think, percent discount if you do the annual. And I showed you in one week how I paid for, what was it, four years of your solo annual membership by that bear call spread, $2,400 if you did it. Uh, top solo annual. Let me give you the annual. 897. Reminder, if you are uh monthly yeah it's uh, uh, the the monthly is 97 bucks a month uh, lewis yep 97 bucks a month that's why you should do the annual it's a hell of a lot cheaper 97 bucks a month which is insane but it's cheaper than my other services the 167 per month because we're only trading one name <laughs> so you know it's uh, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a break every you're in it folks um the 
Yeah, David, I can. I'll, I love David, man. David's on a chairlift. I love trading on chairlifts, man. We'll be going out to Aspen for spring break. Yeah, I'll send out a text and e- email alert. So to David's point, if you can't attend, you know, 80% of our members are busy Monday morning at 10 a.m. I will send out a, a, a text and email alert. That's what the text alert looks like on your cell phone. And then I, I took a screenshot of each trade. That's going to come out. Uh, in an email. And then obviously about 30 minutes after I get done here, I'm going to stretch my legs as the replay is rendering, grab another cup of coffee, the replay is posted. So if if you miss something or I saw that, you know, a shitload of people couldn't get in the room because I forgot we're in go to training, I'm going to send the replay to them. Chris, I'm so geeked. I've been a subscriber for almost three years now. And this is the first time I've able uh, to attend live. I only know you via the replays. The manuals I already told you about. Here's what you get today. Access to our brief every Monday at 10. The text and the email alerts, the three skill-based manuals, and access to our uh, ready room. Um, Bob, 37 grand. Goose, 23.8 in a month on Amazon. Chuck, thanks, Wiz. This is pre-split. For the 3,500 calls, uh, I cleared 15 grand. I had uh, six more contracts that hit 30% for the other 50. These are normal folks, man. These ain't these. We do some good stuff here. If you want to fly for a month, it's only ninety-seven bucks a month. I'd prefer you be a monthly member for the rest of your life. That's the jerk thing to do. The cool thing to do is to have a cheaper annual option. So I gave you both. You want to test fly it for a month? Do it. But wait, there's more. This is the flex seal tape guy. I'm going to turn into him. But wait, there's more. Just like on Amazon, after you buy something, they're like, hey, people also bought this. Make sure you take the upgrade. It's only 195 bucks, man, to get access to the training. There are other folks out there that have shitty training on like VHS tapes for five grand. Mine's 195 bucks. Building block approach. If I just did that synthetic stock in eight minutes and you're sitting here going, I have no idea what that was. Go watch the full throttle training. It takes a building block approach. If you don't even know what the hell a put or a call is, session one. And you will get smarter and smarter and smarter and smarter. Okay? I'm begging you. I'm not begging you. Do it. That's an order. If you don't take the training and you're in one of these live trade briefs, I'm like, all right, I'm going to do a bull put spread really quick. And you're asking me 80 questions. I'm not going to have time. The live trade briefs are about live trading. The nightly training and the full throttles are about training. This is why we do that. In the old days, I would spend an hour and a half in here doing a synthetic stock. And then I'm like, that's dumb. Let's focus on meat live when the market's open. And then we'll do the training at night. Uh, Total my Amazon trades for November and I was just in shock. Cleared 117 in profits this month just on Amazon. So grateful for this group for what I have learned and accomplished. I had a total of 33 Amazon trades this month that were mainly spreads. Wow, I love it. So ladies and gentlemen, our newest live, uh, one of them, 167, nope, it's 97 a month or 897 a year. It's easy to remember, topkinoptions.com slash solo annual. Yeah, the SPX ran right up to 4025, man. Remember the SPX likes moving in those uh, $25 increments. Full throttle's full, folks. Saw a couple emails to support like, hey, can I? Nope, you can't. If we're full, we're full. Uh, Solo Amazon is open. You can get into Solo Amazon now. If you didn't learn anything today, I failed. But hopefully you learned. Maybe you should take a look around your trading cockpit. Maybe you should, man, you know what? He's talking to me. I got nine positions. I got 15. I got 33. I got five. Folks, I have three to four, right? From some psychedelics to Amazon uh, and uh, ConocoPhillips. It's a lot for me to, it's only four names and you have, folks, I want to be an expert in shit. I don't want to be a jack of all trades. If you're just sitting at a blackjack table, you know, betting hands all over the table, you're doing it wrong. Why don't you be a card counter? So simplify your trading cockpit. Join Solo Amazon today uh, and learn how to trade a couple names. Uh, Amazon mainly, and then some XLY we talk about every once in a while. It was a lot better when Amazon was 4000 bucks and XLY was 125 <laughs> But now that I think the XLY might even be uh, more expensive uh, than Amazon. Okay? Good stuff. 
uh, on the full throttle. Is that added to the yearly Amazon? Negative. Nope. Lewis, solo Amazon is not part of full throttle. Full throttle is full throttle. If you're in full throttle and you want solo Amazon, it's it's extra. It's not part of any full throttle. Solo Amazon is a standalone service. So if you want to get in solo Amazon, it's 97 bucks a month or $8.97 uh, a year. Now, down the road, if you want to be a Lifetime member, Lifetime gets access to absolutely everything. But we can talk about that uh, down the road. Okay. All right. I am going to send out a text and email alert to our solo Amazon members. No offense, if you're not a member, you're not going to get the text or the email. They're not cheap. The text alerts are not cheap to send out. Uh, so I am going to uh, blast out uh, text and email with the trade for my people on the chair list because I love people on chair list because that's what I'm going to be doing here shortly. Uh, yeah, here is, that's the annual. And here is the monthly. Okay, so w one more time, the, the there's full throttle training, okay? So if you're seeing a box that says, hey, do you want to upgrade into the training? You, you don't have to do it. You'd be a fool not to do it. It's eight training sessions. I just did a synthetic stock live in the trade brief, and it took about eight minutes. I do synthetic stock lecture for about an hour to an hour and a half. So this training is the 195 or 197, whatever the price is, uh, a little bit of an upgrade. Don't do it if you don't want to. You'd be a fool not to take the training. And that's me being uh, blunt. And it is a steal at that. Again, it's people give me grief every once in a while. Like, dude, I, my DVD series is like 49.95. I'm like, mine's 150 and it's better than yours. Because mine, it wasn't done 30 years ago. I do a couple times a year, which I need to get on the schedule. Uh, I do the training. All right, so I'm going to, uh, you guys don't have to sit here as I do this. I'll, I'll, I'll end the brief, but I'm going to send out a text uh, and email alert to our current members. Okay. Any other questions, concerns, or oh, by the ways, before we get out of there? Is there a link? Uh, Lewis, scroll up. There's two links right above the question you asked. There are two links for you to click if you want to do an annual membership or monthly. After you get your annual or monthly membership, there will be a box that says, hey, do you want to do the training as well? That's So I don't have the direct link to that. You got to go through the process to buy uh, the training. Okay. All right, folks, I got to go. Uh, went a little long, but I, I had to do a little bit of an intro to uh, brief what the solo Amazon services. Hopefully, uh, can't get which link to work. So they're right there. The monthly. Let me paste that in there, and now I'm going to click it. Okay, that that works for me. Here's the redirect, Jesse. Uh, do me a favor and click on that one. Maybe I had a, a blank or a space in there. So uh, do me a favor, somebody click on that one real quick and, and, and let me know that that one works. Sandra, yeah, thank you for asking that. The answer is yeah, you actually do get access to, uh, uh, to full throttle training. Once you get that tag, uh you're in every time i do a new full throttle training i was doing them quarterly but my schedule is swamped i'll probably do them a couple times a year uh so yes uh sandra you get access to those ad infinitum it's a great it, it, that's what's insane again folks it ain't all about the money for me i got my money i had a blast in chicago wrote a book about the covid crash where i got filthy rich i do this for fun and sport the majority of the money I make actually goes over the fence into our foundation so we can save veterans' lives. I'm heading to Costa Rica in about three weeks to, uh, uh, with a couple female fighter pilots, another fighter pilot, and uh, to help save lives. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's a good deal. This is 
You're not, you're not going to find this anywhere else. There, there's the rest of my sales pitch. All right, guys, I got to go. Uh, you got the links. Shoot an email to support at topgunoptions.com if you have any questions. Uh, other than that, uh, hopefully you got on board today. Uh, and uh, I'm fired up. If you're in full throttle, I'll see you all tomorrow uh, at 10 a.m. for the primary live trade brief. Okay? All right, folks. Awesome. Great brief. Appreciate you showing up today. Have a great rest of your day. Happy hunting. And make sure you hedge. God bless. Fights on. And uh, namaste. I'll, you'll, you'll be getting a members. We'll be getting a text and email alert in a couple minutes after I get done uh, pecking at the keyboard here. All right. God bless, guys. And I'll, I'll see you all tomorrow for uh, the primary brief if you're in full throttle. See ya.